I was once a camper myself. But it wasn't anything like this. Cheap creep. What's going on, all my creepers? It's almost camping season. It is nice and it's in the 70s right now. Beautiful. A little early uh, preview of what's to come in the spring. It's not gonna last long because this is Michigan. We're gonna drop right back down in them 50s again probably next week, but hey, it's all good. But on this episode, we're gonna work on some more fun stuff. I'm gonna start working on a backsplash for the camper and let's check out the, uh, the roof. All right, as you can see, I took and I got the whole thing nice and flex sealed all the way around. I took and uh, ran a second coat down the center line and around seams and places where I felt that it needed to be thicker. And then something else I did too is um, the uh, the bag that holds the canopy tent thing. I just took and flex sealed that because that was kind of looking crappy too. So uh, it's nice and rubbery now and it'll repel the water and resist the mildew and all that good stuff. But let's start checking out the inside. All right, the first thing I want to do is take and get a nice flat board on there and uh, maybe fill in the cabinet a little bit right there. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to do before I put the bagger board in is uh, fill in the countertop a little bit. I'm going to do that with just a couple of pieces of uh, the smaller that I got and I'm just gonna lay them just like this but I need to figure out how high I want this to go and all that so I'm just gonna kind of frame it in place there we go right about like that that tight area just to kind of get the height right Too high on that. Right here. That's a much better sound. It's my backboard here. Okay, good. All right. So now that we got. Um, the bracing up and that backing up. Um, I did cut out a nice piece of wood for the backer board for my splash guard, and I'm going to use a stick on tile application. Um, let me show you here. It's like a vinyl tile application. Uh, where is it? Right here. A product called uh, Smart Tiles. And this has got a gloss finish, and it's a subway finish. And uh, yeah, you basically just uh, peel the sticker there, apply it, and yeah, you're good to go. I guess you gotta cut it before you peel the sticker. I guess that makes sense. Let's open this up and take a look. So I guess what? We just stick it down like so. And then I need enough to do the corners. I can run that all the way to the edge too, right? Yeah, let's see what we can do here. Oh, I didn't know that either. If you look at this, I thought this was a part of the sticker and this was whatever, but no, this silver on the inside, 
that's a part of it. It's like fake grout. So that's cool. Let's not mess this up, guys. Straight as I can get her. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty nice adhesion. It feels good. To the end like that. Overlap the whole thing. So there's not really much guesswork to this. And then try to square it up as best you can. You think putting cell phone stickers on is easy, like the screen protectors? This might be a job for you. Yeah, that looks pretty good. This is like all or nothing. Okay, so I did get that to overlap right there, even though it doesn't say to overlap there, which I kind of wish it, well, I guess it would confuse you because it depends on what piece you're doing, but you want to overlap your, uh, your height too. That way, there your uh, your grout lines um, are uniformly same uh, thickness. You square so line up with your last line. You take your grout all the way down to the previous tile. got a pretty dang good seamless application. I mean, if you look at it super up close, you can tell. But from a foot away, a couple feet away, it's actually pretty challenging to tell this isn't real tile. Decent, sharp knife. Okay. Barely touched it. Well, you can see why I did that now. So it uh, runs all the way to the edge. I'm doing everything in my power to dirt this tile up before installing it. It's gonna look vintage. Okay. Goes up against my wall, and I've got a bunch of screw points. So the rest of this is gonna be the edge and everything. I'm gonna frame this, I think, and paint it white, and the top probably white.
nice and secure. Like this guy. And then I just need to mark the height. All right, I got my piece of wood all expertly cut. Pop that in there. I have a guide for the main tiles. So I, if I disregard that, it's going to leave a gap. Yeah? No. I'm half tempted just to bend this thing. So, uh, you know, don't use my methods unless uh, you're feeling uh, like doing it the funny way. That's my plan. I'm gonna line up my tiles with the overlap lines and bend into the corner. This is, this is silly. But I'm just kind of silly too. This block of wood, I get a square bend in the corner. Like so. Damn, so much so that I, I might not even cut this. That lines up pretty dang neat. I mean, tile, tile don't bend, but if I put a caulk line in there, you wouldn't, you're not gonna see it anyway. I said it yet either. I like this stuff for small applications like I'm doing or maybe not even small applications. Use a real tile. <laughs> I, I don't know. It's uh, it's preferred but when you're in something that needs flex I mean you can't go wrong with vinyl. Like, it's gotta, gotta be able to flex or it's gonna break or As bad as I am with stuff, not doing the best of jobs, this stuff is pretty forgiving. I mean, I got a little bit of a gap there, but like I said, I am going to caulk this for appearance. Man, if you're square challenged like I am, trying to get things square and level, this stuff works pretty good. A little bit of practice, and uh, you can become a pro at sticker tile. Now, now I need to figure out how I want the rest of this to look. So this is a piece of my piece of my pine. I could just put this down like that. I don't want something flatter. I might use that aluminum. Yeah, let's try to paint it white. There's no sense in bending this because it'll just look not uniform. So um, just go ahead and do that. Before I do that, I'm going to paint this right here. Uh, 
I got a big old bag of buttons. And they're just the simple round toggle. Very cool. Whoop. With a nice satisfying click. And um, they're the kind that just kind of pop in a hole and uh, hold themselves in place. All right, we got both of our holes put in. I'm gonna put a piece of tape to find the center where I wanna put a notch across the two holes. That's how you do it. Got the shrink tube and the solder all in the same thing. All you do is heat it. Solder melts. Soldering it really well. And you've got yourself one heck of a good connection. Okay, um, our uh, nice white piece dried for this side, so I'm going to go ahead and silicone that down. Well, two. Let's go get our other one and pop it in place. Really tidies that up nicely. That looks pretty dang good. All right, folks. I think that's a wrap. This tile job came out pretty good. Yeah, clean up my cock line a little bit. Uh, yuck. And I suck at caulking. But makes it look kind of real. Anyways. Got our switches in, uh, you know, on off switches, boom, boom. That's the light up there that's still on. But uh, I really like this a lot. Um, it's like a perfect amount of light from that little light right there. Um, good for cooking and everything. Well guys, this was a fun one. Uh, we got ourselves a sink in and uh, or a range hood, light and a backsplash. So that's pretty cool. Stay tuned for next time and we'll do something cool and fun again, I promise. Not sure what we'll be working on next, but it'll be something cool.